Baskar Laksaminarian, who's the Chief Investment Officer for Asia at Bank Pictate. This is one of Switzerland's largest private banks, founded in 1805, so 200 and five years ago. Okay, Basker, thank you for joining us today on the Bloomberg Edge. Let's uh, get right to it and talk about these inflation numbers coming in higher than expected. And as I mentioned, Premier Wen already setting a 3% inflation target for China. So a lot of tightening coming down. Uh, well, I mean, certainly, I mean, I think you you, you should expect, uh, given those, you know, you also saw that the underlying economy was doing much better. You saw that the industrial production was doing better than expectations. Uh, retail sales are doing much better than expectations. So obviously, you should start seeing a bit of uh, price increases come through as well, which is why you're really seeing inflation pick up. I think you're also beginning to see that purchases price index uh, inflation is also beginning to increase. I think these are within expectations. So a tightening mm -hmm. policy is something that we, we said will happen, and I think we'll continue to see that. Okay, how much of a tightening policy do you think we'll see in China then, Basker? We had JP Morgan on earlier today who said maybe three interest rate increases this year. What's your view? Well, I certainly think that you'll see some sort of uh, interest rate increase, but that's going to be uh, further down the road. I think they'll still tinker around a bit more with reserve requirements, uh, look at liquidity. You know, we're still not completely out of the woods globally in terms of uh, uh, growth. So I think, I think it's going to – we have the luxury of taking, and Asia in general and the world in general has maybe a little more time before you get very aggressive with rates. So okay, I would so possibly expect later by the second, or second half of this year you should start seeing some rate increases. All right, so second half of this year. Let me just ask you, Basker, because the last time you were here, we talked about China in October, and it was one of your top picks back then, and it continues to be. But what are you buying into? What would you advise people to buy into, those A shares traded on the mainland or maybe the H shares traded here in Hong Kong? Well, I mean, the H shares is what's more accessible to people, so I think that's our, our recommendation broadly. Uh, but you could always buy the ETFs, which, uh, which also give you an access to the, to the A share market. Uh, so that's, that's one way of playing it. But otherwise, I think the, the consistent theme that's going to play out in the, in the multiple year story is consumption. So buy all the consumption themes. Yep, buy all the consumption themes. That's right. What about uh, inflation, though? I mean, yeah, it factors into the prices and profit prices and also margins for companies. Are there any specific sectors that you would uh, be more, I guess, you know, impressed with and in buying into at these points? You mentioned consumer. What about banks? Banks is always an issue because, you know, in the, in the tightening policy, they are the ones who initially could falter a bit because uh, the, the rate increases go out a little against them. It affects their bond holding uh, in, in, in their balance sheet. So some of the reported numbers and knee-jerk reactions normally would, would be negative for banks. But I would think once that rate increase starts to price itself in, uh, banks again become a very attractive option. Okay, besides banks, term, anything else looks good? Yeah, besides consumer, go, go ahead. I would, I, would say, I would say largely consumers at this stage, and uh, maybe the second leg would be, would be to buy into the banks and then into the commodities. And then into the commodities. Okay. Well, Basco, what about the insurance sector? And we were talking about that earlier. J.P. Morgan says buy into insurers because look at their profit growth, triple digits. We're looking at a threefold increase for China life itself. Um, if you're going to get into financials and banks, why not look at insurers as well? Absolutely. I think, I think a rate increase environment actually helps the insurers, so that's something that uh, would be something to look at. Okay, well, let's talk about allocation then, shall we, Basker? Because uh, back in October, you were at uh, holding 55% in equities. Now that uh, proportion has dropped down to 35% in stocks. And in fact, the only thing that you think investors and uh, we should be overweighting these days is cash. So it sounds like a pretty uh, cautious outlook from your perspective. Well, the caution is really because based on two things. One, we think, you know, we've been talking about all these rate increases and exit policies and uh, uh, pullback of some of the liquidity that normally has negative connotations for equity, at least in the near term. And two, uh, unlike last year, this year, the, the difference between emerging markets and developed markets is not much. The earnings and, and the valuations are, in fact, a little, the, the valuations are a little richer in, in Asia, uh, while the earnings are about similar to the global uh, earnings growth, at least for this year. And hence, we've actually pulled back a bit of that uh, equity exposure that you saw when we spoke last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and what but about it, the eurozone? It only I mean, means, yeah. Yeah. So it Go only ahead. means that if, if, there is, if there is a market gyration and if there is a correction in these markets, that we would actually mm -hmm. be adding back to equities and very likely to be in emerging markets. 
Okay, uh, quickly, let me just uh, get out some more breaking news here, Baxter. We have the uh, new loans for the month of February, and as expected, uh, it came, came in at 700 billion yuan. We had expected this. We had uh, preliminary figures coming out from the Shanghai Securities News, and it looks like uh, it's bang in line with uh, what the figures are for the month of February. So, Baxter, let's talk about uh, this credit fuel boom in China. Then, uh, do you have any concerns, as a lot of people do, about rising bad loans? Uh, you know, I think you should expect a little bit of bad loan increase, but I don't think it's going to be a runaway problem. Also, if you were to look at the long-term loan growth, for the, if you were to take a 10-year history of uh, Chinese loan growth, it's been about 16, 17 percent. So I think it's in line. It's not, it's not an outrageous loan growth. It was just that last year, a lot of things had to be done to kickstart the economy. So I think it's, so you would see a little bit of runoff of that as, as the loans age, but it shouldn't be a runaway problem.